and we are now officially recording. So welcome everybody to this um, extraordinary session on uh, wikis and digital infrastructure. We are very happy to host Johnny Saunders today, uh, who has been giving a lot of thought to this and we're gonna do a proper introduction in a bit. Um, and for those of you who are watching this later, you can always contact us uh, on Open Neuroscience or leave comments on the YouTube um, comment session. Uh, and we'll try to get back to your comments as fast as we can. Um, just for those of you who are not aware about Open Neuroscience, we are a community and collaborative project where we're trying to um, curate open source projects for neurosciences in a way to make it easier for people to find those projects and, and make it easier for the developer of those projects to actually have people using their projects, right? Um, we have also, we're also hosting a seminar series uh, on that gives space for developers to present their projects. Johnny has actually presented in the seminar series on their absolutely amazing work uh, of autopilot, which I guess some of the inspiration for this semantic stuff comes from there as well. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let me actually get onto the actual stuff that you came here to see, uh, which is Johnny talking about their work. Uh, so little bio on Johnny, information Libriage, sorry, I'm gonna get this wrong because it's very, yeah. <laughs> Johnny is an information liberationist that is strategizing with, strategizing with groups across disciplines to rebuild basic scholarly infrastructure. They believe we can use prodigious prodigious resources of public funding science to do our part in dismantling informational capital. By replacing our broken systems, we can see technology, we can see the technology in social organizations to claw back the world owned by uh, surveillance conglomerates from publishers to cloud landlords. I like this very much, Jordi. Um, <laughs> today, today um, the goals of the meeting is to learn best way or good practices, good infrastructures to manage content that we create uh, online. So basically, for instance, if we can make something interoperable, more user-friendly, that is easier to copy, replicate, and move. Sorry, one thing that I didn't say, and this is my bad, Matthias and Ceci who are here are two of the people who are working in open neuroscience and whose our internal discussions have led to this public uh, call. And it's a lot of their ideas that are into open neuroscience nowadays. So respect where it's due. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so Ceci and Matthias are here and like are pushing forces of open neuroscience as well. Um, and so we thought about framing this in a way where Johnny is gonna talk for a certain amount of time, it's gonna share with us what they know, right? And then we have a challenge, which are, there are many groups on the open source space. They're all building stuff that doesn't communicate with each other. And these things are hard to maintain and share in the long term, right? And we thought about a tool. So we've been thinking about tools and how we can actually use those tools. And good documentation transforms tribal knowledge into institutional knowledge, right? Um, and wikis provide an opportunity for building long lasting interoperable systems of documentation for open source software and open tools. And so we need to do a critical evaluation. And so what are the principal challenges for building interoperable systems in the open space? How do wikis address these challenges and what are good ways for collaboration? So without further ado again, <laughs> Johnny, do you want to uh, get us started? Sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I'm sorry I made you read that extremely verbose thing. Um, <laughs> so um, so this, this uh, comes uh, after like a, a bunch of conversations that we've had about like, how do we deal with uh, the current uh, repository information that we have here that's sort of like difficult to maintain, a little bit inflexible, and ultimately like building something that can be glued together with other uh, with other resources. So um, as like sort of like been alluded to already, I'm not going to, I don't have any slides with me because I'm talk's going to be short and we're going to be talking about a bunch of websites anyway, so it didn't really make a lot of sense to put together slides. So, um, so that like one of the major issues is that 
uh, in open source is that just like we have a huge amount of disorganization and especially in scientific open source where people aren't necessarily used to what might be considered best practices in the rest of open source world um, about just like how do we link these things together? How do we make sure that documentation happens? And how do we make sure that like there's like a community that surrounds these tools that like actually makes it so we don't have to constantly reduplicate each other's labor? Um, and the thing about this is in science, this isn't an accident um, that we're actually structurally disincentivized from doing this type of maintenance and interoperability work. Uh, because the way that we get uh, credit and the coin of the realm is writing these papers. And so in the rest of the world, you don't really see uh, that a lot of like software and different tooling operationalized in papers because usually that isn't the best format for this kind of information. Uh, a lot of like more granular level like build documentation will be a lot more living documents that can be edited freely and stuff like that. But in academia, we don't have that. Instead, we're like incentive we're incentivized to make ten bazillion different new papers or a new framework for doing this thing. Um, and so, what is the and, or, or there's just no medium for sharing these different things. Like how do I share um, my just like very tiny bits of information? I, one of my favorite examples is this uh, this thing we made with uh, Jacob Voigt's the glue wiki, the short run, short uh, lived precursor to the autopilot wiki, which is like just information about different types of glue. Like when do you use hot glue versus super glue? What are the best brands of glue, whatever. Like all of this stuff that's like contextual knowledge that actually matters. And uh, when it comes to actually being able to uh, perform experiments or do any, well, I like to think of this more broadly than outside of just like experimental science, but just like this type of contextual technical knowledge that we spend our careers developing, but then have no means of actually representing or sharing with people. So to me, it's a failure of ours for taking public money, solving these problems and not actually returning that to the public. So the other problem with these type of repositories is that you have like the n plus one repository problem. Like I'm sure everyone has seen this like XKCD uh, comic of just like, we have 10 competing standards. We need one that unifies them. So now we have 11 competing standards. Same thing is true in repositories where just like we want to make a new index of these tools. And so, well, now we have another one. And so uh, part of what I'm going to be talking about today is like, voluntary interoperability but then also adversarial interoperability which is like a terminology where, where a term that refers to what if the people don't want to build their tool to work with ours what sort of other strategies do we have in order to make it so that we can make one like a larger system without needing everyone to necessarily adopt the same strategy or adopt the same tooling um and the other major component of this and like i'm sure that the uh, open neuro people will appreciate this is that just like it's a lot of labor to maintain these types of repositories by having like a sort of centralized point of all editing um, and so opening up to allow other people to contribute and uh, adopting what in the early wiki parlance uh, is called soft security where just like what how does curation work either we have just a couple people that manage the curation and we have this sort of just like council of elders that are the ones that contain all the knowledge or we open it up and allow it allow um, allow everyone to be able to edit and make sure that we have the tooling to support that kind of thing and in particular with wikis like making sure that we always have edit histories making sure that these edit histories are creditable making sure we have like talk pages so that we can discuss changes before we make them so like this is just like a different spirit of curating these things than um is is typical in these uh, in these types of uh, repositories. So, um, what is special about the semantic wiki part is that it's a blend of human readable text and computer readable text, where a wiki is built on a database, uh, like a, a SQL database, but uh, usually that just contains text. Um, and so you, we usually think, treat these things as like a dichotomy or as like two very separate systems. We either have some structured database of structured information, or we have some, uh, coll uh, some collection of text documents. And the semantic wiki is a way of doing both in the same place um, and making, uh, making editing a database entry as trivial as editing a wiki page. So uh, with our, I'm just going to give a couple, ex I'm going to, actually, let me see if I can, I'm gonna share my browser screen. Um, okay, so I'm uh, yes, I'm already in the note page, so you can see that. Um, so all right, so here's just like one example to get us started of just like what can a semantic wiki look like, or what can uh, what can we do with it? So this is um, 
One example from the autopilot wiki, just a simple behavior box. It's a nice rectangular prism with got some uh, laser cut acrylic on there. Um, and so then we have the different components of it. So the different schematic parts that go into this. So each of these are, for example, a, um, this one is a 3D printed part, or excuse me, this one is a, a laser cut part. So this is a, a 2D part. We, here we have linked to the PDF of it, the DXF file, which is the CAD file for it, as well as, as uh, a different 3D printed parts here. Um, so, whoa. Oh, well, my, my links must have been broken or something like that. Oh, I'm just clicking on the wrong thing. Sorry, this is what I get for not having slides. Uh, where we have these like 3D printed parts. So this thing down here is like you have the different models, you can preview them, you have the STL files and the step file, which is the um, the programmatic version of that. Um, and then also linking out to like various different types of things within this. Then you have the human readable text scrolling down to the bottom part here where you have the um, then you have the computer readable part of it. So all of the stuff that is written up there in text also can be represented here with these different types of triplet links between each other. So in, in wiki world, everything, a, documents are a page and pages can be concepts. So that was like the first part of a triplet link that has a subject. Then you have a predicate, which is like the way that it relates to another thing. And then the object, which is the thing that you're linking to. So this allows you to not only make what we think of as links, but just like it can be made into something larger and more like a schema or more like a structure of information. And so the point, like I've already talked a bit before about like the, uh, sorry for the resizing, I'm just, I'm, I'm sharing my screen with my notes. Uh, I've talked a bit before about like the virtue of these things, but this talk is going to be more a bit about like how this could actually work and especially like applying this to open neurosciences stuff. So like getting a little bit more into the nitty gritty of how this actually functions um, is at the core of all of these, um, at the core of all of these uh, triplet links are what are called semantic wiki links. So usually you have a wiki link that, and here I'll zoom in a bit just in case folks, folks are on a screen this small. Um, you have a wiki link that is just like this. You have something that goes between two brackets but a semantic wiki link, and you can see one up here, is just something that ha that uses this double uh, double colon syntax. So this is the property here, uses material eighty twenty and a particular subtype of it. Um, and so like this is like the way that you can declare it freely in the text. Um, so that's what a property is. Uh, uh, but then the properties can themselves have types. So, um, so for example, going back to this one where we have schematic type, it uses a schematic, it is a property of the type page. So it links to a page, but this could also be a link. It could also be a, uh, a date, a, um, a, UR, uh, a, a more structured URL. So for example, I use, uh, there's a property I use on a bunch of different wikis like has a DOI. And so instead of needing to put the full DOI URL, you have just the short URL, but then you can transform that into the link and just like represent them differently. Um, and you can also um, import external schemas. So for example, this is a wiki that we were using to coordinate some open letters. Um, and so this uh, category can, so that's another, it's like equivalent or translatable property of a, uh, to a property can import from schema.org. So this, this category is, I'm telling the wiki that this is the same as the schema.org uh, definition of a creative work. And that's also uh, like built on these sort of same semantic wiki links that just like I imported this from schema, which I like, and then using that from creative work. And that uh, lets us make metadata that says that category is the same thing as this schema.org definition. And that's true of any, you can do import uh, any linked data vocabulary. I just use schema.org because it's very familiar and like, you know, actually it has its own sort of his, uh, weighty history to it that I won't get into. <laughs> um, but okay, so that's like starting at the base level of what uh, what a proper, how, like how the properties function, but then um, you can group them together in templates. And so this is also some, sorry, the zoom, the zoom thing is getting in the way of my, uh, my, uh, links here. So what, how any of these things work is just like, instead of it being totally freeform text, it would be nice to be able to do stuff like customize the way that it's displayed. So we have this like layout up here where we have the title 
and we have a subtitle and we have a box over here and it's oh, well now that i'm zoomed in it's all broken and stuff like that um we have these things laid out in tables etc and so the way that functions is with a with a template um so the this uses a double curly braces syntax so this refers to this template that is called build guide so let me pull up the link for that uh here um and this is something that like relates it, gi it gives you an uh you can make a set of arguments so just like like any calling any function um in a programming language uh that then that then uses them within the within the template to say so say i give it an image as an argument um let's see if i go back to the i really hate how this zoom top panel is just right exactly where all my tabs are um where i give it this argument of this image and so then within the template body itself if i have the image i set the property and include the image etc so basically the templates are a way of both customizing how like the information is displayed but also grouping a, a set of properties together so once you have a template um and I'll show how like how this could actually work in in a, in a practical sense of like making a new template in just one second once you have a template then using another extension you can make a form that edits that template so it, it, this becomes a lot easier to um to manage for people who don't want to learn to write a bunch of wiki syntax from scratch which is completely understandable and not something I would ever ask anyone to do so you have this this form here that then can fill in all of the fields of the template. So we have this like this thing, the like modality with or which is like just referring to like what type of page this is or what kind of um, is a very abstract category. Um, and noticing here that you have a bunch of different types of input. So I can have an auto completing token like thing here that like makes it so that we don't have a bunch of the very, very similar tag names, but with minor misspellings. Um, so I just like start typing this like, you know, electrophysiology. Okay, cool. I don't, ha I don't type EFIS. Um, and then, uh, and then like you have the same, the same type of idea that goes all the way through where you can just like have date selection, uploading files, et cetera, et cetera. So how that all actually works and like, so that's like, those are the different components of this semantic, like you have these forms, uh, uh, templates, properties, and uh, one thing that makes it a lot easier to use is this this um, uh, extension called uh, page schemas. So I made a category, just a like a sample category for Open Neuro, and I can do this to create a schema. And this manages the creation and the management of all the forms and templates and stuff like that. So I like I want to add uh, uh, a, a form for my Open Neuro. I don't know, maybe maybe this is like for like to to categorize a meeting. Here, let me zoom in a bit. So I want to take meeting notes or something like that. And so this is just the name of the meeting. We can have a bunch of different options here about that. But then within that, I make another template where I say, what does my meeting consist of? And this one, I maybe want to make a side info box or this is just customizing the display um, in the generated template. And so my meeting, I want to have attendees, you know, like that, I have my people who showed up or whatever. And then I can give it a particular type of input. So say I want to do the text with the autocomplete as one always does, say that um, we can have multiple attendees, et cetera. And then I also want to say, give it a semantic property. So again, this is like the different, just uh, repeating the, the organization. So we're not getting lost here. We have form and we're making a template, which is going to accept a list of parameters. And then I'm within each of the entries of that template, linking them to one of these semantic properties. So this one, I'm just going to say has attendee, something like that. And so without laboring the point and like adding a bunch of other fields, but you could, you could imagine I have a bunch more fields here where I just want to be just like, this is my date that the meeting happened and so on and so forth. So once I make my, um, make my schema, uh, now I have a nice schematic description of this. This is all in XML. I can go through and generate pages for this. So like instead of having to manually make all of the template files and the forms and everything like that, the schema plugin can make these things for me. So it actually takes a minute because uh, 
uh, I am very cheap and don't have a ton of funding or whatever. So my autopilot wiki is on a very weak server. So it takes a second, uh, <laughs> but we can come back to that later. Johnny? Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but there is no, a please. question on the chat. Oh, so yeah, sorry. Sarah, no. do you want to ask? Uh, yeah, please, yeah. Something? Uh, I definitely, I know that this <laughs> Oh, I can you hear me? Okay, sorry, yeah. I, my connectivity is not so good, and there's some background noise here. Totally. Um, just because you were like, and this is all incredibly fascinating, and I have a, a zillion questions. Um, but just very briefly, when you were looking at, um, you know, when provided the option for creating a new schema, what were the pre-existing or available schema from which you could select in that process? I just missed that step. Um, so it can work in a bunch of different ways where, um, wait, so were you asking about just like, which like properties I could use or which, um, I'm sorry, maybe I don't understand the question. So I was really just looking at the interface specifically, and this is just to provide a little bit more context this is coming from somebody who, um, I've been an academic research librarian for many, many, many years. And so like, whenever I'm like, oh, are you pulling from pre-existing schema or oh. um, particular specifications? Like I saw, I saw as you were scrolling through really quickly, I was like, wait, what was that pre-existing schema? Because I, um, again, I have a hundred million questions, but I feel like I just yeah. missed something really quick as you were scrolling through. Um, so that, that is completely reasonable. Um, this all, if you want to go and check it out yourself, like this is all like publicly available pages and stuff like that. So maybe, um, it, uh, I'm like, as I'm scrolling through here, I'm just like, there are like lots of different ways. So like the pre-existing schema, like importing from schema.org, um, is like one part of it where we can access that, um, uh, I go back here. This is done on also a wiki page. And so this is like the next thing I was going to talk about is like everything on the wiki is a wiki page, which is a really powerful pattern. Um, so this is like how the the properties are like can be imported from an existing schema. Um, and the, what I was just looking at here is like a way of defining a new schema, um, like like bringing together a group of properties and putting them in a template and stuff like that. So as far as like what can be done, that's like either using existing pre-existing materials from the site or from another website um then like that can like excuse me these basically you can reuse all of it i'm not i but i think i'm not um getting the question so maybe um yeah you can she, help me out she actually that. wrote in the chat that this makes sense uh she okay. was just missing the pipeline gotcha. and schema.org i think was the thing she was missed in the beginning okay <laughs> yeah, and um, th there's like so a lot of this stuff is sort of clunky. Mm -hmm. We're just like the these are uh, media wiki is an ancient piece of software, and the extensions for it have changed a lot over time. And so like they often don't have a lot of UI polish and are a matter of like just like learning something by brute force. But that's part of like what I what of what the vision is is like getting people into some some place where we can actually work on these things together. So just like help help build the larger community of people using this tool so that like we can actually work on that and then like make more than like the three people that edit this this particular extension um sharing the burden of making usable tools. Um, okay. So I was like I want to like back up and be a little bit more big picture here just like what is the point here like what's the why is this very cool um and it's because that you can have this structured information but you can also represent like arbitrary kinds of information and so like i said everything on the wiki is a page and so you can um and the same place that you have uh your build guides or your documentation you can also have stuff like this is a more freeform description of how to do this particular operation on a computer. So I want to deal with NTP, like NTP, like network time protocol. And I want to figure out how to synchronize my clocks or something like that across different computers. But I want to have that in the same place as I have my build guide. And I want to have that in the same place as I have um, my 3D printed parts. Um, and especially for a group like Open Neuroscience, like you might want to, I know that y'all also run meetings and like have conferences and have a bunch of videos and stuff like that. That can also all be in the same place. 
where you can make a structured category for a seminar series, and that can then directly link to the page for the um, the project that they're talking about. So, and vice versa. Like you can uh, do things like gen automatically generate um, uh, backlinks and different views on the data. So, like that's uh, that's the other part that's useful about this is that. Where on a wiki, you, there's there tends to be a lot of manual editing and a lot of manual organizing and stuff like that. But with uh, semantic wiki, you can do these queries that um, let you basically say, I have a bunch of things that are in the category of part type, and now I can just turn this into a table without needing to go through and manually add all the links to it. So. I can use my form, say, make a new uh, entry. So like in the context of open neuroscience, like make a new entry for a new project, make the new project, and then it'll automatically show up in my list without me needing to go and make a link to it from there. Um, so the, the other parts about this is like, what's challenging about um, uh, making these repositories and make them something that can, that's like useful for people and people want to contribute is like, they need to be creditable and need to be something that like, like actually feels like I've made this difference. I've actually um, like contributed something larger and then also, but like have that still exist within the larger ecosystem of academic credit. So it also is possible to make structured links to uh, exit. Like if, say I've got a paper for my, uh, my project already, instead of, I don't know, say issuing a new persistent identifier um, on the blog post for the project, you can actually just directly include the existing persistent identifier that they have. Um, and well, then the page itself becomes like a quasi. I, I I know that I know that there are librarians. If like since I've heard there are librarians in the chat, I won't even wade into the notion of what a persistent identifier is. But um, just to say that like that you can make use of like, all these existing um, properties and all of the existing sort of systems of credit assignment at the same time as making something new. And so uh, I also like I didn't I don't want to take up the full hour with with this, but there are two other things that I want to talk about with these things. And so like, so I want to get to questions about just like how to actually use these things and maybe how to set this up. But one of the important things is ingestion. So y'all have a huge amount of existing work um, already. And so how could that actually, how do you actually go about putting that inside of a wiki? So the one of the things that makes the wiki very interoperable is that it has a really nice API. Um, so both MediaWiki, which is the base layer of the technology, and Semantic MediaWiki, which is an extension that goes into it, which gives all the semantic functionality, have uh, have really neat APIs for interacting with the page, uh, editing them, and querying the data. So this is just an example for a bot that I'm making currently where this is all it takes really to insert text into the page is very standard API calls um, doing like, get me a, so this is a, a Python requests session. So I can actually just like show that part where we start a session, then we get the API URL for the, for the, um, for the wiki and do a nice little post request to log in, et cetera, et cetera, like standard API flow. And then uh, inserting the text is just a matter of doing another post request saying, here's an edit action, and I want to put it in this page, put it in this section, append the text, et cetera, et cetera. So you could easily take what y'all already have, um, which is, so for example, like you already have structured information. Um, so this is the example of that of your entry for autopilot. So you have this YAML front matter that, um, that has the title, date, authors, et cetera that you could then parse in Python or whatever you want to parse it in, doesn't really matter. And then from that, from like a uh, ingestion script or ingestion bot or whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna use it as, you can uh, do a structured in, uh, input into the, into the wiki. So for example, I have this template that I'm using um, in this bot, for this bot that I'm making for this workshop that, takes Discord messages that have wiki links in them and then automatically puts them on the wiki. And so this is just an example of, you can do the same type of thing, like automatically formatting a template. So re recall the template syntax that I used before with these like double curly braces. 
I'm just basically doing that in Python and then using the API to uh, push that onto the wiki. So that would be a way that you would be able to ingest your um, ingest all of your existing stuff and just whoop, just shoot, shoot it on over to the wiki there. Um, and then the, since the template can handle all of the formatting, and that's also something that can be updated as you go, or just like say you want to change the way it looks or change, then once you change that template, then it re is reflected on all of the pages that use it, which is, makes it also a very quite maintainable. So then the other question is sort of just like, what about the broader scale of, uh, of these other repositories that are out there that like also index this information? So like, this is because you have such a nice API for interacting with the wiki and it's something that um, uh, ma manages history really well. So like it's, it's possible and like really actually uh, friendly to automated edits and automated changes because if there's a problem, then you just revert the back in the history. Like what about, for example, like another pay, another repository has an entry for the same thing. And we want to make it so that we uh, build on each other's work. So the point here is like that we want to make a repository that indexes, you know, additional stuff and and make it make it so that like our work is cumulative and builds on each other instead of making yet another like sort of hidden off repository. So it would become it's relatively trivial, even though this page is not very it, like doesn't have like a lot of structured information. What you could do is then uh, with with any web browser, we say, okay, I want the title. It doesn't. Okay, we have entry title, great. So then I can copy the CSS selector, um, which uh, I don't really have a text document open. But like basically, like you don't need to go through and uh, try and isolate which element of the page, but you can just automatically find yourself a selector, um, and then make a list of these different elements in it. So like, okay, now I want the body text. What's the body text? It's in this text inner class. And down here we have other structured information like, like the paper and everything like that. So basically you could make a interface to another repository's format. So by making a, um, okay, I find the author here, I find the paper here, I find the title here, and then a bot that will go through and scrape all of that information. And then using the same technique for ingestion that I was describing before, then you just like can put it in a template and you can do it in a way that respects the work, you know, the respects of the labor that goes into that by making it so that you have a template that links back to where it came from. So this is an entry that has the open neuro um, component. And then there's like a box beneath it. It's like, here's the open behavior version of this. That was that, that comes from this URL that has this content in it that like, and so it's not a matter of taking it. It's a matter of building it together where it's, still very clear where it came from. It's still very clear like who wrote it and 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 who contributed to it. But it's like encourages um, a broader space of infrastructure where um, where if like it like how do we overcome this incentive challenge of it's it we need to make a new repository so that we can get funding and grants which is a very real problem. But like we can make it less of a problem by if making this new repository still adds to the existing um, space of information. And I have some other tools um, for doing some automated scraping stuff for less like, like this is still a static HTML page. And so it's relatively simple to scrape. But if there are other repositories that use more dynamic page elements, I can uh, walk you all through scraping that kind of stuff too. And then the final thing I want to talk about is like, Having this type of system where you have a, a, structure, a, a wiki with structured information and human readable information in the same place, and it has a nice API that handles ingestion, and you can uh, build bots around it, then you can do stuff like, uh, I'm really inspired by this project by this person, Flancy, and it's in like uh, my digital co-op that uh, is called the Agora. And so what the Agora is, is it has a bunch of different bridges to different mediums. So like, it can read posts from Mastodon, which is where we met, and then also from Twitter and from Discord. And then so what I, what happens is when I use Wikilinks just in a Mastodon post like this, then it will automatically make a page for um, for that concept in the in the Agora and link back to the post that it comes from. So 
what can you do with this is like if we have uh, people talking about a project or people like you know the people making a thread about their uh, new project or something like that, you can add it to the wiki directly from the place that people are talking about it from. So this lowers the barrier substantially for like having people add information and and so you can start with relatively unstructured information like here's a just me grabbing a tweet thread on this on this particular project, but then that can be built into more structured um, uh, information on the page. So you capture the information and then we can organize it later. Um, so this is just like, this is, that, that's just to say that like by having this type of tool, we can not only make an easier to use repository, we can also make an entirely new kind of way of interacting with the repository um, that, uh, that like makes it more uh, accessible and more powerful and like also uh, with the uh, goal of adversarial interoperability in mind, forces us to imagine a different kind of infrastructure. So by being, so I, something I didn't mention is that just like the Agora bot beneath every time you link to it, it posts the link to the page that it generates. So it just sort of puts it in people's faces, just like here is a place we could be, we could be talking about this instead. And so where and that like eventually takes us to a point where we're just like we're not just like documenting and indexing stuff but we can also discuss it there like so the same sort of incentives that keep us from uh from maintaining stuff and making making a software interoperable in science makes it so it's like we it's really hard for every single developer to remake a documentation system to remake a discussion system to remake a community system so in like by having it in this wiki context that can be linked to ongoing conversations on different media then it's possible to like fill in the missing pieces of the documentation for that particular project. How do I use XYZ package in this context with these other tools? And the, the wiki is a natural medium to support that kind of conversation. Um, okay, so that's, that's, a, that's all the stuff I had prepared. But um, so I, <clears throat> I came like the initially the goal was to talk about how we can bridge uh, multiple repositories together, but the other repository folks were just like, uh, didn't want to show up. So that's totally fine. They're very busy. So instead, I'm like, I, I was just thinking like, how can I be useful to open neuroscience? But I also see there are lots of other people in the audience too. And so I want to hear both from the open neuro people, but also like other people facing similar problems. And especially since we have like, I mean, I don't know if they're still here or not, but just like, librarians who who have been facing these types of problems and have seen probably way more uh examples of this kind of uh system than i have just like their take on this uh and uh any like advice wisdom criticism etc because i'm this is like i don't view the wiki as like an end goal it's very much a transitional medium where just like there's still a bunch of things that it doesn't do very well um and but i'll stop i'll stop there cool um, thank you very much, Johnny. This was really, really informative and really, really interesting. Um, I think we can, I think Open Neuro can wait and get actually opinions from other people first, um, because we are already in contact anyways, right? right? And so it would be great to hear from other people what they would like to share. We do have some questions on the discussion uh, on the pad. Um, so, oh. if, yeah, so if, People don't have anything pressing that like to say now. Maybe I'll just start reading from the list there, and then we can use that and maybe as a starting guide, right? So Tim, who um, so all right. So Tim is leaving, but he wants to know if there will be an email list to get in touch with attendees. Uh, if everybody's happy, I can certainly send a round email for everybody who registered. Um, and create maybe a group for people to chat about these things. Oh, um, so I, am, am I in the right section of the the link here um, that Tim is asking about uh, WYSIWYG editing? Yeah, so could the semantic wig concept be used as what you see is what you get electronic lab notebook, right? Yeah, so yeah. Johnny, I'm, I'm still here for the next minute. I haven't been told to switch meetings yet, so. Um, please go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so um, check this out. Uh, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, so uh, the um, the media wiki over it actually is a more than a decade in development. I think does indeed have the visual editor and it's very good. So um, again, my slow servers and everything like that. So yeah, you have basically a way to do visual editing that is 
it's like has all the features that you'd expect from like a Google Docs type thing. And like you can use the like subheadings and everything like that. And that has um, and that it's a one to one um, uh, generator of the uh, wiki text, too. So this is like exactly what you'd write if you were doing it in the, in the wiki markup. Um, it also uh, is pretty uh, well integrated with these schemas and with the forms and with the templates as well. So um, yeah, yes, you can definitely do that. I We use it in our lab. Um, I was sort of like inspired by a neighboring lab, uh, Santiago, Santiago Jaramillo, if anyone has, like has run across like him is just like the one of the people who just like started thinking about wikis in the first place. But like they do this already in their lab and our lab and it works extremely well. I've um, I've done this same type of uh, organization now in like maybe half a dozen different groups and every group does it a little bit differently and finds some different um, way of using wikis, but like, um, yes, it works really well as a, as a lab notebook. That's great to hear. Yeah, I mean, I think my follow-up question would be, even still seeing the graphical interface, there's a lot of confu potential confusion for an undergraduate student, right? Who might be like, that might be their first introduction to a laboratory, an electronic laboratory notebook, right? Because paper mm -hmm. laboratory notebooks are kind of in, very intuitive, of course. Absolutely. So anyway, it's yeah, I, I think it, maybe I'll give it a shot, but it's it does seem like a, even still a little bit of a, a challenging thing to have an undergraduate. Sure. Definitely. And I, I like, this is one of those things where just like, I, like I talked about the knowledge feature group, people about this, except like for a bit about just like what makes an easy to use interface. And yeah, like the the getting the 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 what you see is what you get type editor up there so that there isn't that cognitive shift between the markup and the rep and the visual representation is like one step. But then yeah, another thing that will that really helps with that is like examples and give and using more structured approaches like here's a form um, where just like giving people a form where just like make a new entry in my lab notebook and now I have fields where just like aha now I can I'm, I'm prompted to do this type of input as like one way of of making that transition a little bit easier but you're right it always like all every new system requires some transition costs and some training costs and especially thinking in wiki is like a little bit of a different cognitive pattern we're just like we're so used to thinking about like documents as being very sort of precious we're just like i have um one document it's like got a bazillion pages in it but a wiki can be page per concept and like i can make a link to a page without necessarily intending to fill it in right now or ever um, and so just like the idea that every concept has a page is also a different and like like learning how to organize around that can take a little bit of time. Uh, but yeah, it's so the other part of this is like if there is another system that is like easier to use, same notion of like having this these ingestion tools, like if it's easier for people to write in a markdown uh, a folder with a, in, in a repository, then you could just make a, a bot that goes and grabs all the markdown from that and shoves it onto the wiki. And uh, I'd be happy to write something like that because I have wanted something like that myself. Yeah, thank you. Very interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, so we move on to the next question is like funding incentives promote creation of novel. Actually, who, who asked that question? Maybe do you want to unmute yourself and ask it? instead of me reading from the text. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just very quickly so that we hear from other people. Basically, I I get that you can write the bots very easily, but because the funding structures are there for people to actually get a have the funds to to devote time to all of these, like how are we thinking about getting the funders the funding structure right to build these bots? who can like scrape from the different flavors of people that are incentivized to create their own version of the world, right? Wow. Uh, how, how can we move into that funding scheme? I, well, I don't have like a lot of, like a lot of good answers as far as like changing the behavior of funders. Um, but like the, the, the goal is basically to demonstrate what is possible. We're just like, dear funders, don't go and fund a brand new type of repository instead start funding like a type of repository infrastructure so like something that's easily deployable that can be remade and re so like instead of making database brand new database uh for um my genomic information or something like that and like funding the whole back end front end development from scratch or whatever 
instead focusing on building these types of very, very flexible systems um, that can then potentially have different extensions that, that enable it. So it's just like, like that would be the argument I would make to a funder is that just like, instead of doing what you're about to do with the, like the white in, in the United States, at least with the like White House Office of Science and Technology memo saying, hey, every, every funding agency needs to develop their own repository. Instead of having that be, now we have NIH database. Now we have like, you know, every different funder having one just like, why don't we find this type of thing that can that can represent a lot of different types of information, but also pull from a lot of different sources of information and uh, put it together. And the the reason why I'm like I use the media wiki stuff is because um, Wikimedia uh, Foundation has just like put in an immense amount of time and development on this already. So it's like the amount of additional develop it, development is relatively little. So, and what's also cool about using the Wikian index, this kind of stuff is that, then the bot can also be a wiki page <laughs> where just like the same type of thing where you're trying to incentivize development of stuff by giving it a place to live, a place to be found, a place that can like give people actually credit for stuff. Um, that same concept can apply to tools that make the wiki itself uh, more powerful. But yeah, I don't have any definitive answers for fixing the funding situation, uh, but this is just like one piece. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and folks should feel free to like butt in and, and jump in and stuff like that. I, yeah, like, uh, I was going to say that, Sarah, like, do you want to, or actually, there is somebody before Sarah in the discussion or somebody who would like to add to that, right? Yeah, please. No need for it to be Q&A, me, then someone else, then me, then someone else. Like, feel free to also, <laughs> if other people have thoughts about these questions, that's not like I'm an expert or anything. Could I jump in really quick to, on that discussion? Hey, Johnny. Hi. <laughs> uh, great talk. I think I hear, like, to me, the thing that seems strongest and in, in the examples you gave, like being able to take from autopilot and using the semantic information there and just populate a repository, like open behavior with that seems like a thing that is more two way so, so like when i see like in research software world people are trying to do similar like a repository but it's often really uh tied to the you know i'm using like a citation.cff file and there's only like basically a certain amount of metadata but if you can have these like schemas that that have you know people can just sort of flexibly use then that gets you towards what you're going for i think and so, so like you would want a funder, I don't know the right way to convince funders to fund this. So what I worry about is that the, that, you know, the whole world hasn't started using wiki, right? right. Like it feels like you want a tool. I hate to be like a research software engineer that just gets fixated on tooling, but like if there was a way to just make it really trivial for people to sort of like make the schema, maybe that's the thing that helps I don't know. That's just sort of a thought that I was having as that discussion was going on. Like, I'm so give, me a, with you. give me a schema tool. Or something. I don't know. Maybe exactly. Maybe yeah. So this is like something that every librarian that I've talked to that has tried to work with linked data, which is like the general term for like these triplet style links. Um, it has a, like more of a history than that, but um, like is like this is super hard to do. Like with the tooling sucks. It's like like RDF, which is like the historical format for this kind of stuff, is an extremely difficult thing to write and read. And so part of what I'm going to be developing, like the starting this next year, is exactly this: is like making the tooling to make it really trivial to develop these types of uh, schemas. Because the goal is like where like. Like where like a lot of the history of linked data sort of crashed is that it's so hard to manipulate these things. It's so hard to like negotiate over them and have multiple versions of them. And a lot of that is because like Git didn't even exist or whatever. Like the version control systems that that like that were existing at the time were also quite brittle. So like this notion of fluidly changing, forking, merging these different vocabularies just like wasn't a possible idea. And so like that wasn't focused on in the tooling. And so there wasn't really this this like this uh, focus on making anyone can make a, a vocabulary. So then it became sort of like this like priesthood model of like only the people that know how to write 
uh, an owl vocabulary are able to do it. And so then that trickles down into beliefs about the tool and about like eventually the types of tools that get built around it. So I'm 100% with you that like, in the, in the same sense that like I was saying before, I don't view the wiki as like the end goal, especially like the media wiki driven uh, wiki as just like a transitional piece in this system. Um, like making the easy um, easy schema creation thing and the easy data ingestions thing. So especially when you start thinking about not just like index data or like, you know, textual data or like video, but like being able to actually get research data into a repository like this or relate it to a repository like this. Like, yes, we need a separate tool, but um, focusing on having like the wiki as just a being sort of like a, a database and an indexing system and then having separate tools for being able to do ingestion and be, like data ingestion and reformatting and, and and schema creation is totally the way I'm thinking about this too because that is ultimately the thing that needs to happen um, and it shouldn't be the case that we always redefine the same schema on every wiki either it should be possible like much easier to bring these things between these the, these wikis share them same thing that we're talking about with the rest of the information that just like in the same way it should be easy to um uh, to to grab information, we should also be able to grab the metadata uh, structures and, and negotiate over those as well. <laughs> so, fun. Oh, I, I Sarah, I'm curious. Like that, some people say that I I haven't heard a librarian say that linked data tooling is like easy to use. Like, like I've heard of like the Sam Vera stuff and like some of the newer technologies like starting to get there as well. But like a lot of people are just sort of like, no, don't make, like we want the linked data tooling, but it doesn't quite exist yet. And so I'm curious to hear like what you're think, what is like, what is working uh, over there? Well, so uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm on two different devices and I apologize for, I think you're probably gonna hear banjo music. <laughs> the background, maybe a little, love it. Maybe a little bit. And I don't know if you can see. I don't even know which camera's on. I'm going to stop that. All right. So, um, <laughs> um, and so, so I don't. Rather than talking about like the tooling that works, I, in my experience, I can provide you with what doesn't work so far as linked data is concerned, and it's coming to an agreement about the utility and purpose. Um, of using it. And honestly, it's, you know, amongst librarians, we're, we're all about it. And anytime we talk about repositories, it's like, please don't create another damn repository. We need to be looking at something that inter that establishes an interconnected ecosystem between all these disparate places. It's really just about getting to a shared understanding and consensus amongst the people who are interested on how in the world do you approach that. And so, um, in looking at massive, you know, open source um, discovery uh, tooling projects in library land, such as Folio, the future of libraries is open. And I'm sure you've all heard about it by now since um, the Library of Congress signed that major contract with EBSCO. Um, I'd love to chat with you at some point um, with, uh, in another conversation that's not being reported about like how ready for prime time Folio actually is. Um, but it, it is it is much more about, you know, when you're talking, I mean, I agree with you, absolutely, you don't want to create a new schema for every single thing. But it's like, that's why I was so curious when you were going through, you know, let's, you know, look at what fields are available, let's look at this and that to the, the basically the criteria that you would review in order to understand whether or not you needed to determine a new schema. Mm -hmm. It's getting the group to to establish a baseline of what are the fields, what are, you know, I know that it's like deconstructing to the nth degree a bit, but like, that's where I've seen most of these problems reside, is that it's not about using like, yes, of course, RDF is, is the optimal choice. And, um, you know, there are many different forums of us metadata slingers who talk about linked data, um, but it's really crossing that divide of like, why would you want to do this as opposed to creating a new thing? And that goes back to what you were originally saying, Johnny, about how, so the other, other hat that I have worn in the past, um, yeah, I'm an academic research librarian, but also been studying uh, educational policy in the area of open, um, specifically looking at, you know, open publishing, tenure promotion cycle. Um, and how that locks in, you know, locks down progress in all things open. And this is another part of it, is that academia, yeah. as it's structured as a system, as it commodifies knowledge production is preventing us from moving that direction. The system itself is built to, 
prevent us and it's trained a lot of academics to not want to engage in this consensus building. Um, so there, that's just my, my waft of hot air that I'm going to leave um, here. Sorry. Uh, I mean, again, I have a lot of thoughts on this. I'd love to talk with you more, like maybe in a separate conversation. So I want to make sure other people can ask questions and whatnot. Um, I will just close in stating that the work that I am doing, I've just left um, academia, so mostly to work on developing consensus and look at developing tooling in open. And these conversations are coming up all over again, yeah. right, with R or RDF. Um, nice. And, you know, how do we develop a shared vocabulary and ontology? And I'm like, it's not about the tools, like this tool will work as well as the other one. It's about like, how do we agree on the overall approach? Absolutely. Like then this is like one of the things that I think is so potentially powerful about like the per, like the triplet structure. Like I, I like to like abstract away because like I when I've been talking about linked data, like people get a lot of like flashbacks, like, no, don't make me write it. And so just like just thinking about it in the very abstract of like the baseline triplet idea. Um and as being like if you have if you have this ability to make this sort of arbitrarily structured information that can draw from other schemas like that, that like can take them remix them take a property from them put them in a new form whatever and then just having this very abstract representation then it like it becomes the tooling becomes pretty arbitrary like how do we edit it doesn't really matter pick your editor how do we represent it doesn't really matter we have the underlying data but like now we have an interface to it that this one looks like a chat room you know where we have where each like message is has like is a linked data structure, but this one looks more like a wiki page, and this one looks more like a like a um, an archive entry or something like that. That like and I feel like that sort of like the the like somewhat minor minorly missing component of that is just like how do you swap around all of the like triplet graphs and stuff like that, and then apply some different interface to it. Um, and so that's that's another. Um, uh, that's another uh, thing that I'm going to be working on starting next year is just like you need to make the social systems, as you're saying, on top of this. And so why? And, but at the same time, you can make a social system out of the linked data. And so like you can make it in the same ecosystem. And that's actually what I think, like I've talked about this in other talks, like endlessly is like what's so amazing about this uh, protocol activity pub, which is what um, Mastodon and the rest of like the Fediverse style stuff that are just like, um that are so it's like federated internet where just like we have a clone basically of twitter but it's not owned by twitter and it's like hosted by a bunch of different people but they can still all talk together in sort of a global space without with you know so it's um but it's built on activity pub which is this incredible social merger of uh link data people with decentralized messaging people and the amazing thing about it is it's like a real strong demonstration of the power of link data to um so like, how do I send a message to everyone? I just use the link data term for the concept of everyone. <laughs> and so like, you can like, instead of just like, yeah, it just, it becomes this like uh, way of merging uh, what should be like the social social structures that need to go around the tooling with the, in, in, this, in the uh, same medium that you can build the tooling on top of. Um, Public interest technology. Well, I don't know this term, but I I'm guessing at it. But... I think David wanted to chime oh, in or yeah. something. Sorry. Yeah, I, I I also don't want to dominate the conversation, but I just I wanted to echo a point that Sarah made about getting everybody into the room and talking of like. I, I think there's sort of like a couple of sort of use cases. There's the one, Johnny, I think you mainly showed like here's documentation for autopilot and open behavior. And this is sort of like these bigger repositories, you know, ingesting projects to share them. And then other people talked about like lab notebooks and that might be another sort of use case. Mm -hmm. But for like something like, if we just focus on that first one, like a bunch of people are open neuro here and I know you already talked so, but I, I'm curious to hear what you think. Like, it, it feels like, you know, I see a bunch of the projects you have listed on the page and I'm like, it it, it is sort of like, there's this, uh, you know, Everybody, everybody wants to be the winner, right? Like they're all implementing their own platform. And now you have a platform of platforms and basically whoever gets the most buy-in, which might be because of a bunch of unfair incentives we have in academia, they will end up being the default like 
you know, if if the, if everybody's using cloud platform X to run their experiments, then that becomes like the default metadata standard. And so they sort of like won just because they got lucky and got funding or whatever, right? Which is annoys the rest of us <laughs> and, and may end up being actually really painful. So, so like, I, you know, probably everyone else here knows more about this than me, but I was really surprised to see like on the, I just, you know, I found out about FAIR like in the last six months, but like one of the things some of the pe FAIR people did is they had these like metadata for machine workshops and they got everybody into a room and said like, hey, <laughs> like, um, you all decide what's important, like Sarah was saying, right? And so like, and it, it has to be a bunch of different, you know, whatever term we want to use now, stakeholders, right? Who, you know, so not just the people running the platforms, but people that are actually using them too. And so like if funders got, got everybody and, you know, Johnny and the media wiki contingent all together for a conference, right? And they're like, you decide what's important. We're going to make a schema for it based on the outcome of this conference. Would that be like a useful way to move things forward? That wouldn't just be like some sort of winner take all. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say? I, I have dots, but I, I yeah. Yeah. It's so like can I can I add uh, something to that? So thank you first. Like it's yeah about the stuff of open neuroscience. We're always discussing this as well. Uh, as Matthias also pointed in, in the chat. Um, and just one recent example, right? So Sarah, uh, who's here, me, and I mean, a bunch of like a lot of other very, very smart people back in 2019 got together. It's a group from the Internet of Production Alliance and got all of this play, like all of the stakeholders together in a room uh, to discuss a standard for metadata file format. Um, that would go to open hardware projects. And then it would be easy to find like each open hardware projects in a different platform. And then this little metadata file would allow people to simply scrape the web, finding the file, right? And then putting together, at least like in the first instance, everything in a central page, which would just then point you to the original place where the where the things are, right? And like this is a very much active space still because like the implementations are oncoming but unfortunately like one of the things that happened right away is that like people spend five days in a place discussing this many different people from many different projects and so on like six months down the road there was already like the first fork of this thing right and now there are like different like implementations of the same standard and we're now in conversations like trying to bring all of this together in a way right um and so I, I'm all up for this idea. Really enjoy the process of sitting down together and thinking about these things. But I don't think, unfortunately, this will be the silver bullet that solves all. I would much rather like uh, Johnny's suggestion of like, you can scrape the data from all of these places, still point back to the original um, place, and everybody is contemplated in that way, in a way, right? And mm -hmm. even if a platform has a lot of money and people ended up using it, like Thingiverse, for instance, right? which is one of the worst ones, I think it's fine because eventually in the long term, everybody's actually now moving away from it, right? From Thingiverse. So it might yeah. be that in the short term people win, but then in the long term people don't win. I don't know. I think we have to play this for the long term anyways. So I, I have two real quick thoughts and then like I'll throw it over to Sarah where I see his like comments here, which like, like two thoughts. One is, um, that like I I see the the problem of just like the one uh, annoying format that like gets stuck and I think I know what you're talking about there, <laughs> but um like being making a superset of that being sort of just like yes we already have this this is already there but we either have something that like includes all of the functionality of it or has an explicit translation from it where just like we can take all of the work that's done there and like. Like again, just like thinking about valuing work, where just like even if we don't like it, we're just like there was a lot of labor that got contributed into making this thing we're just like okay we take all of that and then we can bring that along with us like not throwing it away and then the second part of it is um that like thinking about these like standard setting process that just like the social system needs to be designed into it where just like the um where you have all of these forks of that's like an inevitable part of making any kind of standards that like it always is going to fork because like standards are political like in the same way that language is political where just like the way that you describe something is not a neutral act there's never a one true version of it 
And so you expect you should expect forks, but like, how do we build that into the process of, of designing these standards? We're just like that we, in addition to like having the conference or something that where we sit down and make the, make the schema, then we have a way of seeing all the forks. We have a way of like actually seeing the landscape of how this thing has shifted over time. What are the differences between this fork versus that one? And like, I think, you know, Git gives a reasonable um, approximation of that, but it still is quite isolated. We're just like the different repositories, even like the only thing that you actually see is like a direct fork uh, where you like use the interface to make it. But it should also be possible to just like have a, like a much more holistic picture of just like the way that different terms are being used across, un, you know, seemingly unrelated. Um, I, I mean, I might use the term repository loosely, but just like say a repository full of a schema <laughs> or just like you have the different term used in this other, which is like we need different interfaces that support the social process of these fork, forks and merges because they should be an intrinsic part of any standard. Uh, but yes, uh, sorry, Sarah, Sarah, go on to you. You had some thoughts. Oh, sure. I just, again, didn't want to dominate the, the conversation um, yeah. too much. Uh, I mean, it really, like, as, um, you know, Andrea is saying and, and, and David had been mentioning, like, the process itself of, you know, coming to that consensus is something that I'm very, very interested in discussing more, you know, just so far as pathways forward are concerned, because I've been through that process for so many years in libraries. And so essentially, it's like, you know, I literally have been referred to as like the human IP before in trying to get, you know, all of these conversations and disparate um, viewpoints together to reach one shared goal, right? And you're looking at, you know, tooling, you're working, looking at, um, you know, licensing and policy and, and all of those things. And now stepping into basically, I mean, it's a much more diverse group than that, but essentially I'm working with predominantly like software engineers, right? And, you know, have had a you know a foothold in you know FOSS and OSS and whatnot. However, the approach is fairly different. Um, and in in thinking about you know that consensus building, you know, with one of the, the software engineers that I, I work with, it's been established that like, you know, he he's syntax and I'm semantics, right? And so it's like how did how do you then get to this established like shared understanding of that and and kind of steer, you know, steer the conversation toward that process as opposed to the output. Because I that's the thing that really, and I and I understand that because you're beholden to funders. Same, same, same. I've been in academia for many years. Um, but you know, how how can you balance out that necessity to focus on governance and consensus building in the process while also still producing the outputs that you know get people get people paid, get people to be able to have livelihoods and continue to do the good work. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a personal and a professional question because basically that process that, um, you know, Andre was just describing of, you know, that, um, you know, folks in the IOPA went through in Warsaw back in 2018, my job now is going to, is leading that process for a different specification with a global alliance. And I'm like, okay, I'm, and I'm just getting started. I just basically like put together the timeline for it. So I'm like, all right. Let's get moving. Um, and so I'd be interested to hear what your your thoughts are because it's not, you know, there's no silver bullet. There's no one shared approach. And even somebody who has been, you know, involved in and has led like and convened open governance conversations in consortia and in libraries and whatnot for over two decades, I'm just like, huh, yeah, what's the best approach here? <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I have thoughts, but it's also the case that just like, as you said, you've been doing this for two decades, so I feel like you might, you probably have had them all, you know what I mean? Uh, um, I, I, like, the reason why I like to talk about wiki culture is because I feel like it's a sort of overlooked social history, as well as like a technology that like, if you look back at the, the older wikis, they have a wealth of thinking about organizing principles, digital organizing, about how like communities work online, about patterns of, of development and stuff. And so like, um, I just think about like that stuff where just like they're, they're thinking about these concepts like expand space where just like digital organizing is different, where there's not really a need to 
come to one version or something like that you can always make more space um and or things like um uh like what, what especially in the academic space here i think about like the credit problem as one of the fundamental things and so um where the current system of credit is like a, usually paper or conference or like a, you know something like that um like building a notion of deep credit into the standard setting process itself we're just like so that's another reason why i think that the triplet link system is so useful and interesting is that just like if i do the work of participating in this consensus process of do the work of making this schema or do the work of like building these sort of interoperable things then I will have the ability to anyone who uses it will be in using it crediting me but then also future forks like future times where like this changes now we need to go through and um, make a new version of it you don't just have a trivial contentless citation but you also have a contentful like we are changing this for this reason you're able to like make a link back to it so just like you have a sort of deep crediting where my participation in this process doesn't end and the credit for it doesn't end with the production of the schema or whatever or the tool or whatever you're you're working on but then down like if you make an ecosystem where just like all the downstream effects of that are also part of my credit structure you know what i mean that like uh the places where it's used the times when people have forked it etc becomes then like sort of like that's more of an inducement to actually participating in a system that's like that, you know, that is able to support that kind of deep crediting in the first place. So that like that's like the next type of things I've I've been considering as far as like getting the social organizing part off the ground is like just making sure we have a system of credit, but then making a better system of credit where just like a system of credit that just like that like that is something that could actually be like instead of me listing all of my papers or whatever and like my h index or whatever on a cv just being like look here is a graph of all of my contributions and then all of the downstream contributions and all the ways that like influence like the uh, uh, the rest of the field um as being a, just a more attractive thing uh to show a hiring committee or a promotion committee or a granting committee um that also encourages good social behavior and encourages good uh, contribution to the community where it's like what's the most rewarded thing in that is something that actually helps a lot of people do stuff um, or like something that's useful for people um, as opposed to something that yeah just gets like read a lot because it's the only thing available but yeah um sorry to interrupt this is fantastic unfortunately we are already 20 past uh, the hour okay. Um, but I would like to, maybe we can think, we, so I'll stop the recording now, because mm -hmm. I think now we just wanted to do like some procuring comments and maybe actually find things we could do together to collaborate and like take this conversation forward. Uh, and we can just add links to YouTube and things if we want to follow that up later. Um, 